Okay. Uh, a couple of days ago, I did a video with these really great guys from this group called the Iron Disciples, and they are non-denominational Christians. Um, and one of the things we were talking about is this authority structure in the household that I made a video, a couple of videos about, actually, we've talked about this a little bit. Um, and we talked a lot about this and they were asking me like, what's in the, in the world of Catholics, like what, you know, how is this discussed? And so last night, um, I went to mass with a group of women, um, from my community there, our children all go to the same school. Um, and we all often have like, we have a similar spiritual director, things like that. Like we're in the, we're in the same community. A lot of us go to mass together or whatever. So we went to mass and we went to see the, uh, relic of St. Jude that was coming through the Chicago area. So it was very exciting. And um, so it was beautiful service, beautiful mass. Everything was gorgeous. And then afterwards, we went out for dinner. And what was so funny is people were bringing up this channel and, the, and I was talking about that interview I did with the Iron Disciples and how, you know, they were asking me about, you know, Catholics and this authority structure idea. And I said to one of the women, I said, yeah, I, I gather... I gather that people often in it, like in the more, maybe in the Protestant world, but also in like kind of the more um, secular world that a lot of people don't think about this. Like they don't have like a, they actually haven't kind of laid out exactly what the structure of their families looks like as far as the, the authority structure and the hierarchies. And, and she was so cute because she looked at me and she's, and she was like, how do people ever get out the door unless they've determined who's in charge of what, like, how do they ever, how do they, how do they, how do they function? <laughs> and it's just very practical way. And so we had this long discussion about this and how, you know, what this looks like in our own marriages and like how, how we as, as women kind of make these decisions that are very conscious and to, in order to have a happy home for our children and for our husbands. And, you know, these women are not, they're not like little mamby pamby wimpy wimpy women. These are women who are highly educated, very intelligent, very capable women. And I came away from that just really it just it was very apparent to me that a woman who purposefully submits to her husband is doing that because of her virtue because of her it's not superior she's not superior to her husband because people the genders neither gender is superior to the other one men are not superior to women women are not superior to men like there's no i mean as far as their holiness men can be stronger women can be more flexible whatever but they're not you know nobody's there's no overall superiority of one of the genders like as far as in your in your spiritual development right like men whatever there's tons of women in heaven and tons of men in heaven. And that's not, that's not the point where nobody's better than anybody else just because they're a man or a woman. But it, you know, I came away from the conversation thinking these women are not little subservient, diminutive, like women that can't make decisions or do good things for their families. It is precisely because of their deep intelligence and their deep ability to take responsibility for themselves and their maturity that they have consciously decided to have a household where they respect their husbands and they work with their husbands for the benefit of the children. And they don't try to usurp their husbands because of their own feelings of, you know, inferiority or I don't know, um, whatever emotions they're having or uh, their own feelings of... Um, you know, less self-worth or anything like that. Like these are competent, intelligent, you know, women that are just, they're like, yeah, but this is how it works. And this is the best way to, you know, for my marriage to be structured um, as Christians. And this is what God expects. And that's my choice. And what I, I think people, you know, one of the things that's very scary about, you know, the idea of being a submissive wife is we think that means that we're going to let our husbands walk all over us. And like, actually, what's interesting is I think for the most part, a woman who will consciously hold her tongue when she needs to, a woman who understands her place, and that doesn't mean because she's lower than, but she knows exactly when to assert herself, 
That's what knowing your place means. It means that you are aware enough because you're self-aware enough that you can figure out at what point you're going to enter into this decision-making process. And for a healthy marriage where the man and his wife both respect each other, that interplay is, is quite smooth all the time. I mean, I don't think that there's usually a lot of battling at all in these kinds of marriages. I mean, certainly one of the women I was talking to, I know her and her husband and, and her children, and they are that man is fiercely in love with that woman. He adores her. And there's many reasons that I'm saying that, that I'm not going to share on this channel, but they've been through things, um, not in their relationship, but things have happened to their family, like very, very difficult things have happened to them. And I've seen the way that they've interacted and they, they work so well together. And so anyway, I just coming across because I'm like, it's so, these are not like, you know, women that have been put upon. These are treasured white wives who are just so loved by their husbands, loved by their children, loved by their communities. And I'm not, that's not the point. You know, the point is to obey God and to get closer to God. It's not, the point isn't to be loved by your community and your husband and all that stuff. But the chance that that will happen, the chance that your husband will love you and and cherish you, that will go up if he sees you consciously deciding to do what's best for your family and what's best for him and ultimately what's best for you. He, his respect for you will grow tremendously. Also, he'll become a better leader because I think men, like, you know, hopefully he's been a good leader from the beginning. Like I will say, my husband has always been a very strong leader. Like we've never really had too many of these kinds of issues as far as like this sort of um, me trying to like dominate, like that hasn't really been an issue for us. He's always been a strong leader, but I do think, you know, in families where maybe there this is a little disordered and things are a little disorganized and there isn't this sort of structure, um, this understanding of the structure. I think when wives just, when they're like, okay, I'm going to drop the reins. And honestly, I see feminists say this all the time. I see feminists say it all the time. They're like, it is time to drop the reins. It's time to drop the oars because men who are being sort of dominated by their wives, because I think men are so averse to conflict with women. They don't want to fight with their wives. They just don't want to do it. They just start giving everything up. And then the woman feels like she's carrying around a child, you know, a grown man who's also a child. I think with men that are being kind of dominated and, and, and demeaned if they're being demeaned, but they're not necessarily, I mean, sometimes it's just like the woman is so competent that she's just like running everything. It's not even like necessarily like openly demeaning, but she's just in charge of everything. And he's like, okay, well, I go, I don't know what to do. And, um, it's like this, I, I don't know what to do. She's stressed. Like, I don't know. I, I never do anything right. You know, we've all seen those marital, marital marriage issues. Um, but then the woman is just constantly frustrated. And it's like, if she just is like, okay, I'm done. I, I can't manage all of this stuff I need. I'm going to give this over to you. I think men generally will step up. I think they'll step up. I think they need a little encouragement and probably a softening from their wives, like a softening where she's going to be a little sweeter, you know, and not judge him. I think he'll, you know, he'll pick up, he'll, he'll step in, he'll step in. And then your marriage is going to be calmer. Like the household's going to be calmer. You're going to get places on time. Like the, your house will probably start it, it, like, honestly, it might be like a little bit order, like more orderly. Like you might find that your chores are easier to do. You might find that everything just kind of falls into place when you allow your husband to take a position of authority where he is, you know, you know, um, setting rules with the children, setting boundaries with people. He'll help you set boundaries with your, with people outside of your marriage too. So that's another thing that men, he can help you see, Hey, you don't need to drop everything and help that girl, that friend of yours that's, you know, that needs you, that she thinks, you know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes women, like we start, we, we're, we're so compelled to help our communities that sometimes we can just be run ragged. And I think our husbands have much better boundaries when it comes to that stuff. They're like, no, you're not dropping everything and helping so-and-so. You're not dropping everything and volunteering at the school for this. Like, you're not doing this. That's where this sort of like male rational, um, not that they're always rational, but when men work on it, you know, they, they can kind of see through nonsense a little bit better. Once, once you sort of allow him to, to be that person and you sort of surrender to the, to him in that way, 
uh, that stuff gets easier too. So it, it's mostly, all I'm saying is you're not some pathetic little mamby-pamby woman who gets walked over, you know, because you have consciously decided to submit to your husband. There's a reason St. Paul told women to do this 2,000 years ago. This is hard for women. This is hard for women. That's why he told us to do it. Everything that the Christian tradition tells us to do is hard. It's never easy. You naturally don't want to do this, and I hear you, because it's, you know, it's it, it feels less stressful to be in charge. It feels like if you can be in charge, that everything will go well. But eventually, you can't manage everything. You can't do this on your own. You need your husband. That is his job. And just let him let him captain it. Just try it. You know what? Just try it for a couple months. And if it all falls apart, like, okay, I can't help you anymore. Just surrender a little bit. It's okay. And you'll feel better. You'll be less stressed. Your life will be easier. And you'll feel better about yourself too, because you'll 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 like who you're becoming. Nobody wants to be some like, but anyway. Okay. So I'll just say, it's just smart women, smart women, competent women. They could run this country. They're not running the country. They're trying to take care of their children and their homes so that we have good citizens in this country in the future. That all starts in the home, by the way. All starts in the home. So anyway, bye. See ya.